All right, well, hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Progressive Auto Sales Arena. As per always, I'm David Burroughs here at the arena tonight, and joined by my special friend, Liam Henderson. Welcome back. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here, Mr. Burroughs. <laughs> Mr. Burroughs, don't let the gray hair fool you. Yep. Well, today, of course, the Sarnia Sting taking on the Sioux Greyhounds. Uh, of course, an ongoing rivalry between these two teams. And something new that's happening here today as well, it's the first annual toy drive. And the toy drive, well, that's what it's all about. People bringing in toys to support uh, local children here and uh, sponsored by North Kent Mutual Insurance, I believe is uh, the sponsor for that. So thanks to them. And the Sarnia Sting, another way to give back into the community with their first annual. So in other words, I think they're looking to do this uh, every year, the toy drive here today. Liam, you've, uh, you're, you're a big Sarnia Sting fan and I know you've been following along. We really got off to a rough start this year, but the Sarnia Sting have been able to turn it around, and it shows that they're really capable of taking on any team in this league. Yeah, I agree. I mean, during that stretch where we won 10 out of those 11 games, we proved to the league and to the entire CHL that we are not to be messed with. Now, <laughs> the thing is, is that we've lost three of our last four games, but that's all right. You know what? We're going through an up and down season. This is a roller coaster season. Now we're playing the Sioux. This is our true test of really where we stand in this league. Yeah. Two, clo two teams really close to the standings, only by a difference of about three, which is expected, especially in the early, yeah. early few games of the season. But it's going to be fun to see who comes out on top today. And when you when you look at the, the standings of uh, many of the teams, a lot of them are tied with points or very close in points. So it's, it's still kind of any team's game at this point. And, uh, of course, uh, recently losing to the Guelph Storm, that was a tough night for the Sarnia Sting. Um, but the last time the Sioux Greyhounds were here uh, in Sarnia at the Progressive Auto Sales Arena, we were able to come out on top of that 7-4. to four. So... Of course, the Sioux Greyhounds will be looking for some payback tonight. What kind of things do you think the Sting needs to be prepared for against the Sioux tonight? Well, you know, I feel as if last last game on Friday, they could have done a bit better. So the Sting are going to try to improve against the Sioux team. If you are watching the game, expect a really close game. These two teams are very similar in how they bounce back. For example, the Sioux, they're off to, they were off to a bit of a rough start, but now they're they are climbing back up. They're never giving up. They're, you know, they're persevering, and, and so and did the Sarnia And they're a pretty aggressive team too, right? Yes, indeed. So we have to be prepared to, I think, get a little more physical than maybe the Sarnia Stings used to doing in order, yeah. which they had to do last time. And, uh, you know, the shots on goal is something we talk a lot about here on the broadcast, Liam. And we've just recently seen those shots on goal for the Sarnia Sting get a little bit larger than they were. But even when their shots on goal were low, that's when they were winning because they were quality shots. Yeah, I mean, the Sarnia Sting are doing a good job of getting those pucks to the net and scoring goals. The thing is, is that we need to increase our amount of shots on goal margin to our opponent. For example, on Friday night, the Sting only got two shots on goal the entire second period. Now, yeah, that doesn't work for scoring goals. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and only five shots in the first. They eventually got their game back in the third period and won that period battle. But the Guelph Storm had just a huge margin against the Sarnia Sting, so they need to improve on that in order for them to bounce back. All right, very good. Well, there you heard it from Liam Henderson, our friend here joining us today at the Progressive Auto Sales Arena. Liam, yep. one more time there, buddy. Thanks All so right. much for showing up here. We're going to let you go and uh, go off with your family, and we're going to bring Danny Cacciamilio in here. All right. Well, I'm Liam Henderson signing it <laughs> off, and Mr. Cacciamilio, take this from me. All right, here we go. Thanks, Liam. All right. Oh, hello there. Check, baby. Check, baby. One. All right. Now, now get in here. 
Oops. Hi, hi, Mom. A little bit of transition. Hi, Mom. Well, boy, uh, Liam Henderson, he's always got lots to say, and he's very knowledgeable about uh, hockey and a lot of different sports. He's quite a, a young fellow. We're happy to have him here. And you better watch out. He could he could replace you, Jake, and Jay all in one shot. I look forward to that. <laughs> Danny Cochimilio joining me here now uh, as the uh, – Sarnia Sting prepared to take on the Sioux Greyhounds. And I was just saying to Liam there when we were talking, you know, I think uh, obvi- it's pretty obvious that the Sioux Greyhounds will be looking for some payback here yep. uh, as last time uh, losing to the Sarnia Sting 7-4. Uh, what a great game it was. Oh, Sorry yeah. it didn't come out your way because uh, for those of you who don't know, Danny is originally from the Sioux. So I just uh, he was crying. just wanted to say thanks to everybody who reached out for me for, that were born and raised up in Sault Ste. Marie. It doesn't matter where they are in the world. Yeah. They still reached out to me. I had people from Ottawa. I had people from overseas saying, Danny, good show. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. But you didn't know I was going to make you that famous, eh? <laughs> I had something to do with it, folks, just so you know. I want 10%. Uh, no, that was good. I, I saw that, actually. It was kind of Well, and you mentioned uh, there was a couple players that you had mentioned in uh, the last time you were here to tell everybody, remind everybody who that was. Well, uh, even, uh, oh, God, there are so many. Uh, wasn't there, wasn't there, uh, there was a story you told about oh, the head passing, the pu- passing the puck or something and getting the goal? Or? Oh, uh, it was Steve Spina. Right, right, yeah. Steve Spina and Brad Baber. Actually, Steve Spina, uh, hey, Stevie and Paul, um, they reached out to me and they said, you know, thanks for bringing up some good memories. They had yeah. some uh, chills going up their backs and... Uh, and it was good to relive uh, some of those moments and in, in memory and stuff like that. It was, yeah. it was pretty cool, actually. Yeah. It's uh, you know I, I enjoy that uh, conversation we had because you know when we come here we talk obviously we talk a lot of hockey and who's going to do what and everything else. One of the things we don't talk enough about I think is the relationships that are built yeah. between players, about between fans, coaches. You know, there's a whole community going on here in this hockey world and. These relationships that are built are really important, as you said, bringing up memories from years past. Oh, for sure. There's a lot of uh, uh, Sault Ste. Marie Greyhound players that were not originally from Sault Ste. Marie, played in Sault Ste. Marie, and uh, made a lot of friendships and married some uh, women from Sault Ste. Marie and still reside in Sault Ste. Marie. And uh, like Jeff Toms, Kevin Hodson, uh, they went on and played the NHL. They had, now they have uh, good uh, uh, good careers in Sault Ste. Marie. They raised raising a family, beautiful yeah. homes, and stuff like that. You know, and the hockey, uh, the world of hockey gave them a life outside of hockey. And you know, now they're providing for their children and they're enjoying life. Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, now let's take a look. Let's talk a little bit more hockey. Um, obviously, you want the suit to win. I get it. <laughs> but we want the Sting to win. But uh, on a serious note, uh, I mean, we've seen uh, the Sarnia Sting uh, get off to a bad start this season, but turned it around with like 10 out of 11 games having wins. And yeah, um, rough start. Rough start. now their last three games haven't worked out so well for them. So <clears throat> a couple things I'm seeing is obviously the suit wants some payback against oh, their, for sure. their rivalry, uh, Sarnia Sting. But the Sarnia Sting having coming off losing three recently, they're hungry. Oh, what team isn't hungry after losing three, right. four, or five? But the thing is, the Sault Ste. Marie had the flip side of the coin. They came out strong in the beginning of the season. They won uh, five or six games straight, whereas Sarnia lost that, that same amount of games. Yeah. So um, if the Sarnia Sting plays as good as they did in the first two periods of the last game they matched when they were matched yep. up it's going to be a tough game for this for the greyhounds but if the greyhounds come out and play as hard as they did in the third period in <laughs> this first period yeah this thing better brace the, themselves well they better be ready and it's interesting that you bring up that point because one of the things we've talked about uh, post-game interviews uh even with the players is the first period doesn't ever seem to be the best period for the Sarnia sting seems to be the second period is always the best yeah uh i mean and even if you go back to looking over the the uh, game that they won against flint recently back-to-back goals in their second oh, period for, them. was yeah. just an amazing period third period was still good in there but it's just and, and I don't know, what it what does it take to change that in there? You know, you come out and you have the conversations. They know that the first period's been their weakest period. So knowing that, what's stopping you from doing that? What's well, got to change? You've got to remember there's a lot of different parts of this game. Sure, there's a big physical presence of the game. 
but there's also that mental capacity of the yeah. game. And if once they're in the dressing room and they're talking and they're like getting each other, getting on each other, say, so, "Okay, guys, we got to do this as a team. We got to we got to get get out there. We got to get hungry. We got to win." Yeah. And that's what happened in the second intermission in the Susie Marie Greyhounds <laughs> locker room. And the Sting locker room, they're like, "Oh, we got this locked up. It's well, six to one. We're not <laughs> supposed to get complacent, right?" Yeah. And they know that, but it's we're human, so it's easy enough to do. It's a 60-minute game. You got to play 60 minutes to win the game. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 we can talk about hockey all we want, but we don't know what's going on in that locker room right now no. and uh, who's, what's going on on the personal side of any of these players. Uh, one of the comments that I did make last time uh, with uh, Jake Turski when he was here was, are they trying, like, it seemed like the Sting were trying, you can try too hard. <clears throat> and he wasn't, Jake didn't, wasn't sure that that was the case. He called that just being competitive. But then I heard somebody else saying, hey, we're trying too hard here to just, just. Yep, it, you're overthinking. You, can't, you yeah. can't, right, overthinking. It can't be too fast. Everybody wants to be fat. But if you, and, and they showed it when they slowed it down a little bit, but played and went back to the, and read the textbook. <laughs> yeah. That's when things started working out. When the, when the players look like they're relaxed out there that means they're gelled very well together yeah. they can play together and the goals will just happen like that yeah when the guys are looking like they're trying too hard that means they're not ready that means they're not playing together properly yeah. you got to mix up those lines to get those guys who play well together and make it look effortless yeah well, I, I think you can talk yourself out of shots sometimes, right? You know, because things, it's, thing, it's hard to slow it down because things are moving so fast. Out some of these too. guys want to make these plays so, the most prettiest plays. I know. Just shoot the puck on the net. There's no <laughs> points for fancy, right? My dad, when I played baseball, he, I used to get all, you know, but he, there's no points for fancy. Just put it over there, right? Exactly. And, and get it across the plate. And in this case, get it in to the, as Jay Peckham would say, get it into the little meshy thing. <laughs> oh, hi, Don't, Jay. Don't, yeah, hi, Jay. Jay was actually, he's busy. Uh, they have uh, a Christmas carol on yep. at uh, Imperial Theater, and uh, so he's working hard at that. All right, well, uh, about 10 minutes away before the Sarnia Sting come out onto the ice here tonight. What will happen? Well, we'll keep you updated. Danny Cacciamiglia will be joining me as my co-host here tonight uh, for the next two periods. And, of course, we're always live post-game. Uh, depending on the outcome, depends who they give us, uh, players, coaches, you never know. And uh, I'll be posting on uh, Twitter tonight as well. And we're going to have some fun on Snapchat. So find us on Snapchat. And, uh, oh, yeah, the director Jason is looking at me like, <laughs> really, Dad? <laughs> Here we go. We're going to have fun with that. All right. For the show live on location, once again, I'm David Burroughs here at the Progressive Auto Sales Arena with my friend Danny Cuccimilio. We will talk to you soon. Town power. Ha, 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 ha.